Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. It is below freezing here in Green Bay. It is a chilly day. The wind is whipping around a little bit. And it's out of the northeast at 10 miles per hour. The Green Bay Packers, who can beat them? They're 9 and 0. They have a date on Thursday in Detroit on Thanksgiving. They're at the Giants. They're at home against Oakland at Kansas City. And they end the year with two home games against the Bears and the Lions. And Aaron Rodgers, Troy, is attacking seemingly every passing record that's been in the books with this 2011 season. Well, you keep waiting for that game when Aaron Rodgers is going to come out and not throw the ball as accurately as he has been all season long. But, you know, each week he keeps coming out. I don't know that I've seen a quarterback play at this level as consistently as he has ever, ever. And then there's Josh Freeman, and he really blossomed quicker than many expected him to last year on a team that went 10 and 6. Some believe he's regressed. The Bucks have their 4 and 5. We'll see how they get along here today. Stroud's waiting for it. He takes it out of the end zone. And he slips getting across the 20 and it's something Troy you noticed during the pregame warmups that these two teams especially Tampa Bay was having a tough time with the footing. Noticed it last week as a matter of fact with the Packers in the Monday night game and you're right. These wide receivers for the Buccaneers in pregame warmups were struggling. We'll see if they were able to get the adjustments made to the footing in the cleats so that it won't be a factor in this game. You saw that offensive line they've allowed only 15 sacks. Freeman coming off a three interception game and he hands to Blunt. And LeGarrette picks up two. First guy there was Desmond Bishop and we look at this defense and one thing they've been able to do. They're the 28th ranked defense in the NFL. You mentioned the good game Troy on Monday night. But they've been able to make up for holes in the defense or yardage with forcing turnovers. Well and primarily on the back end. You know in this in the secondary with creating takeaways by interceptions they were good last year in that area they've been excellent again this year second down and eight Blunt again and this time Blunt is stuffed at the line of scrimmage first guy there was A.J. Hawk and he was with Ryan Pickett. It's now third and seven. Well, a lot of discussion about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and their lack of being able to run the football this year. And I know in talking with Greg Olson, they want to be able to run the ball. It's what they were built on last year. They come out on first and second down and really don't get much out of it. Dom Capers in this defense usually smells blood on third and seven. Freeman gets rid of it completes it and there he is again it's Preston Parker for a first down if you don't know the name he's been a third down weapon he gets 20 yards on third and seven and he is tied for fourth in the NFL with third down receptions this is number 17. Well they bring Morgan Burnett off the edge and Freeman's able to get the ball out of his hands just in time a shallow crossing route expecting man coverage that's what they get. Desmond Bishop is in coverage but he had to navigate the middle of the field there because of the crossing route and it got him open. Extra men on the rush and the pass is caught but not for much Hawk out there to make the stop on Luke Stucker. A gain of one. Now you go back to that third down conversion. During this three game losing streak by the Buccaneers they have really struggled on third down they've not been very good for the entire season but over the last three games just 23 percent so that was a nice way to start this ball game converting their first third down Matthews on the sideline on second and nine. Freeman throws and completes. That's Aurelius Ben. 
He is wrestled to the ground by Tremont Williams, a gain of five. And this is why Clay Matthews came out of the game. This is two plays ago. I'm not sure exactly when. If it's when a contact was made there with Freeman in the pocket or when he made the spin move, but you know clearly something was impacted on that play. And he's still on the sideline on third and four. Here come the Packers. Freeman has his arm hit and he was nearly intercepted by Woodson. And it's fourth down a punt coming and Josh Freeman got knocked right when he let it go. Well they, they bring pressure in the middle with the linebackers. I thought overall the offensive line they held up decent but they're asked to hold those blocks and let it develop down the field. Charles Woodson typically you know will make that play as you said Freeman gets hit ball behind fortunate it wasn't an interception. Randall Cobb as a rookie has become a real weapon. Returning kicks and punts. Knows the football down and it's Cobb with a fair catch inside the 15. So we'll keep an eye today on Clay Matthews, who was on the sideline for the last two plays of that series. It's no score. Green Bay with the ball when we come back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at Southwest.com. Did you know the Packers have won 15 straight? Flip, 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 flip. And already changing it at the line is Aaron Rodgers. Starting from the 12. And he changed it to a throw and he throws it away. Donald Driver, the intended receiver, will look at this offense, and it's an offensive line. That has allowed 23 sacks, 10th most around the NFL, and they protect trying to help Aaron Rodgers get it to that list of backs and receivers, which is as deep and as versatile as any list around the NFL. Well, you talk about the offensive line, Aaron Rodgers has been hit a lot here in recent games. He's taken a lot of sacks, <laughs> so much for slowing him down. On second down and 10. Penalty flag flies. Looks like a hold as the pass is complete to Jennings. But this one appears to be coming back. And it is. Holding number 71. Offense. Half the distance of the goal. Still second down. That's Josh Sitton. Guilty of the hold, and it takes a first down catch away. And Josh sitting right there at right guard. You see a little bit of a <laughs> takedown right there in the middle. In the presence of Albert Hainsworth in his second game with the Bucs after being picked up off waivers from New England. 50, 59. Second and 16. Quick set up and throw, and there is an incompletion to James Jones. And that's it's not exactly the back shoulder throw, but that typical look we see from Aaron Rodgers quite a bit. We see this throw a lot. It's a it's a perfectly thrown ball, and you know as we know, James Jones has had some problems with with drops here over the last couple of seasons. Hasn't been real active here the last couple of weeks. Only one reception in each of the last two ball games, but a a ball that he should have caught on that play brings up third and 16. And they're going to blow it dead. With a player coming unabated to the quarterback. We'll see if it's against the Tampa Bay Bucks. No, sounds like a false start. Neutral zone infraction, unabated to the quarterback, number 94, five yard penalty, third down. You heard false start in that conversation, but it was called 
neutral zone infraction and it's really both then Jadrian Claiborne has been doing a lot of that lately. Yeah, Adrian Claiborne the first round pick out of Iowa who's given him a little bit of something in the pass rush but third and long made it a little bit easier here with now third and 11. And now Hainsworth gets in on the fun. Neutral zone infraction, number 95, defense, five yard penalty, still third down. You can see Albert Haynes were talking to the official. He's he's claiming that Wells in the middle there at center is moving the ball, and that's why he then reacted. You can see the football. You know, you, got, you know, he tilts it up. And that's that's what Albert Hainsworth is watching, trying to get a jump on when the ball is snapped. That's you know, the center is allowed to move the ball slightly like that. It, it didn't appear to be an abrupt movement. But you could see where Albert Hainsworth maybe came off with that movement. The Bucs are the fourth most penalized team in the league as Rodgers hits driver and driver is hit immediately brought down by Jones the safety a gain of four and it's fourth down. Well that's a nice job by Tampa Bay because last week they did not tackle well in that ball game at all. It was some of the worst tackling that I've seen in the last 20 years. And to be able to come up and make a play for Sean Jones on third down and keep them from converting, that's a nice stop. Bass Day will hit it. And he had pressure, had to pull it down, and he'll get a first down. Lost the ball out of bounds. As Cutrera was in his face. And Mass Day somehow lost it twice, but still got the first down. Right up the middle, untouched. You know, it was going to be blocked. I think he sensed it. And then just rather than punt it and have it blocked, knowing that would happen, he decided to go ahead and tuck it and see if he couldn't maybe pick up a first down. And then the ball comes out of his hands. They will mark it at the 27. And so the irony of that is with the good pressure that Tampa Bay gets with Cutrera coming up the middle. Green Bay ends up keeping the ball. That's unbelievable. I mean a great defensive stop as I said and then they come out they're able to make a block on the punt. And yet Green Bay still able to convert that on a broken play for a first down. Now the first handoff of the game is to Ryan Grant who is the starter right now in name only as James Starks is pretty much taking over the bulk of the work back there. And Grant over the left side gets four. Uh, you know, you look at Green Bay offensively, and clearly they create a lot of big plays within their passing game. They run the ball more than, than I think most people would realize. But this is a game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that if they are going to run the ball a lot and run it well, this would be the game. The Bucs have given up over 170 yards rushing in each of the last three games. They fake the handoff. Rodgers rolling out. Pulls up and fires too low for Jennings. Take a look at Tampa's defense. Tampa Bay is ranked 31st in the NFL. The Patriots are last. They have allowed the most yards per play around the NFL and the most yards after the catch, which may have something to do with that bad tackling. There's the secondary without Tenard Jackson. Out with a bad hamstring. You know, as I said last week, not only was the tackling bad, it, it just simply didn't look like they even wanted to tackle. Now third and six. Nice pocket for Rodgers who finds Nelson. And Jordy Nelson down inside the 35. And a beautiful throw from Aaron Rodgers. And it's a coverage that you would not expect then the Packers to be able to get this throw. You see the little bit of a move look like maybe he's going to come on a shallow crossing route. But he is getting safety help. E.J. Biggers the corner number 31 is getting help by Sean Jones. You believe then that you've got that sideline throw taken care of simply by coverage. But not with Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. They will threaten a coverage. Even when you think you've got something taken away. That was good for 34 yards. 
on third down now on first down this one's dropped off to Starks doing something with it down inside the 30 to mark at the 27 and a gain of seven. And now Hainsworth can't get off the field. I think he got hit by his own guy when he came back trying to make a play on on Rogers in the pocket. So while they look at Albert Hainsworth we'll take a break second down and three for the Packers when we come back. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. Albert Hainsworth is now on the sideline. They were looking at his head, neck, shoulder region as he was hit by a teammate on that seven yard catch and run by Starks. Second down and three here, Starks again. Lowers his head and picks up. One and a half. And we go back to that play where 95 Hainsworth got hurt. Yeah, he comes back and, and he's trying to make a play and Daquan Bowers and he collide and that's where he you see as he leads and then right into the head area. This will be the tenth play of the drive, which includes that fourth down punting effort that turned into a first down run by Mastek. Looked like a three and out. Now here they are. On third and one. Rogers throws and finds Nelson. And a first down at the 19 yard line. And you're just asking too much by these defensive backs. Third and one, of course, you're going to get man coverage by these defensive backs. Man to man on Jordy Nelson. And because Aaron Rodgers gets outside the pocket, you see Rondé Barber's in good coverage, but you just can't stop that. He he gets flushed to his left. Jordy Nelson works the sidelines, comes back to him. All he needs a yard, first down. Handoff is to Grant. After the initial hit spins forward picks up three this Green Bay offense now in the red zone. They are number three in the NFL at converting red zone trips inside the 20 into touchdown 62 percent of the time. When you look at all the different guys who have touchdown receptions you know I mean usually you get down here against a particular team and you anticipate one or two guys is where they're going to go with the ball. But every one of these receivers is alive down here inside the 20 for Aaron Rodgers. Pass is caught. That's Jennings. Ball comes out. And now late they blow the whistle and say that Jennings was down. It's third down. A keep to lead was there defending, ripped it out, but it was too late. And it's third down. It looked close to me Joe as to whether or not he was actually down before the ball came up. sure enough you see the left knee goes to the ground clearly the ball came out after he was already down so now play number 13 will be another third down so far the Packers two for three on third down and Rodgers is going to need a timeout four and a half to go opening quarter Green Bay knocking on the door. Here in Lambo. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. By Pizza Hut's new big dinner box. Get all your favorites in one epic box. And by Bank of America. We welcome you back to Lambo Field. It's third down and three. Hainsworth back in the game. Team that's got the second most points on opening drives, the Green Bay Packers trying to keep them out of the end zone. It's third down and three. Rodgers could run for it, and he does. Slides at the six. 
And a first down Green Bay. Claiborne had pressure and that forced Aaron Rodgers out. We're going to see Michael Bennett. He comes in this way and because of that on the pass rush there's then nobody there for contain. It opens up the outside running lane for Aaron Rodgers. Oh. It's first and goal. Rodgers again. Going to try and run. And he won't make it. And then got a big hit at the back end of it by Rondé Barber. Yeah, and I can guarantee you Mike McCarthy standing over on the sidelines holding his breath because that's the one thing that could bring this Packer team down. You know, they're doing there's some good coverage going on right now on the back end for Tampa Bay. Rondé Barber comes in and puts a big lick on Aaron Rodgers. You, you can't you can't coach that out of a quarterback either. You know I mean he gets down there and he's near the goal line he wants to score but you sure don't like seeing your franchise quarterback take those kinds of hits. B.J. Rodgers in the lineup on second and goal. They give it to Rodgers. No sign yet. They want to see where Raji is at the bottom of that pile. Touchdown. Give us the dance. Let's see the hold up. Big B.J. Raji, you think that he's going to be the lead blocker, and that's a pretty nice job on his part, just being able to secure the handoff. I mean, that's what you worry about when you've got a defensive lineman in the backfield and you're handing him the ball. He got right in behind right guard Josh Sitton and was, <laughs> was able to move the pile and get it in. They've talked so much about limiting his snaps on defense with three games in 11 days, and now he pounds it in for a touchdown. Seven to nothing. So remember, it started with nearly a three and out. And on fourth down, Tim Mastay, the punter, ran for a first down. That led to number 90, getting it into the end zone. Seven nothing for the undefeated pack. That drive was the longest Packer drive of the year. B.J. Raji, his first career regular season touchdown. He had that interception return for a touchdown in the last NFC Championship game. And taking it out of the end zone is Strider. Cannot get to the 20. Pat Lee, the first one to greet him. Buccaneers have it, down seven. Big B.J. Raji right in the middle of that huddle became the 14th different Packer to score a touchdown this year and on their first possession you talk about balance five different rushers four different receivers you don't know where they're coming at you they find themselves in the end zone again up seven zip. Blunt sits down. At the 16, Ryan Pickett, the first guy there in a loss of three. Yeah, Ryan Pickett was the first one there, but the entire defensive line for the Packers just manhandled the Bucks up front. I think overall this offensive line for the Bucks has not been all that poor, certainly not as bad as you would think when you look at the problems that they've had production-wise on that side of the ball. It was a 10-win team last year, 10 and 6. Lost three straight. And off is to Blunt. He picks up two. Desmond Bishop on the stop, and it's third and long. And this is what Dom Capers in this defense loves. Now a player is down, and that's True Blood, the starting right tackle. Let's take a look and see what happened to him. He's on the outside. He's good. Yeah, he gets rolled up on. Desmond Bishop rolls up on the back of his leg. Wow. 
Jeremy's able to get up and limp off. See who comes in, it's Ted Larson. As True Blood gets to the sideline before a third down and 11 and out at right tackle. It's James Lee, number 77. You can bet Clay Matthews is going to be challenging him here on this third down play. Pass is caught. Pepra made the play as Aurelius Ben lost a half yard. And it's three and out in a blink for the Tampa Bay offense. Well, Matthews, he does come on the rush. They, they leave the back end to pick him up, does a nice job. And a little bit of pressure there on the backside of Freeman. But the Packers played zone coverage there. It looked like the Bucks were anticipating man. And Freeman really didn't take much time looking down the field. Even you know, no way they're going to complete the first down on that play. Good punt by Kanan. And back inside the 35, it's Cobb. There's a flag down back where it was snapped. 51-yard punt, 11 yards on the return. We'll get the call from Alberto Riveron. That flag was thrown back at the Tampa Bay 21. Number 44 of the kicking team was downfield ineligible. The five yard penalty will be added on to the end of the run. First down. So that will move the ball to the Tampa Bay side of midfield where the Packers have it up seven. He has the touchdown. The Packers have the lead with under a minute to go. This season it has been a lot of points early for Green Bay and hardly any for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That looks to continue here today. Green Bay will start at the Buccaneer 49. Starks and Starks loses one. First guy there was Daquan Bowers. I think Aaron Rodgers is really doing a nice job with the snap count, and we've seen the Bucks drawn off sides a couple of times. But you think about it: when you come in and play against the Packers, how are you going to get Aaron Rodgers out of his rhythm? You've got to be able to obviously disrupt him by getting pressure, get hits on him. That's something that Minnesota did last week in that Monday night game. And what does he do? He still completes 80% of his passes, 250 yards, and four touchdowns. So even with pressure, he's finding ways to beat teams. And we've seen it already in this game with his ability to escape and pick up first downs with his feet. Now second and 11. Starks over the right side. Nowhere to go. Doing all he can. Picks up two. That'll do it for quarter number one. Seven nothing Green Bay. And we are back after this from your local Fox station. Good night. You're watching Fox NFL Sunday. It is third down and nine as we start the second quarter. Green Bay with the ball at the 48. Tampa Bay trying to convert up seven. Blitz. Packers pick it up. And the pass is caught by Jordy Nelson. And now Aaron Rodgers trying to hurry them up to the line. And just a perfectly thrown ball. You see Jordy Nelson make the play. Was he in fact in? He gets his left knee in. 
a catch to me. The timeout is taken by Tampa Bay. So Raheem Morris didn't want to throw the challenge flag until they get another look at it. They take a timeout. And one knee equals two feet. Someone wrote a book titled that once. Really? Yeah. <laughs> they have it, they should. Timeout, Tampa Bay. Today's game is sponsored by the Miller Lite Home Draft. Taste greatness. By the Droid Razor, thin is no longer frail, only at Verizon. And by the 2012 Jeep Wrangler Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 Edition, rated M for Mature. They get creative with the cheese here in Green Bay. It comes in all different shapes and sizes. Yeah, there's no place like Lambeau Field. You hear it all the time, but if you're a sports fan and you haven't yet visited this place, you need to come. And they're going to add on 7,000 more seats. They're going to redo the scoreboards. Year-round facility up here. Here's a screen for Starks, looking for a block, and now he's to the five. 17 yards and a screen to James Starks, and it sets up first and goal. They set it up very well, Joe. They run a receiver through the middle right here, which takes the middle linebacker out of the way. You see the action there. Now you get the, the lineman out in front, and you've got that whole space cleared out. Nice execution there by the Packers. On first and goal, Rodgers keeps it wide open. Touchdown, Crabtree. Play action and, and outside linebacker Quincy Black. He gets caught looking in the backfield, and when he does, Crabtree then comes free. He sees the action, he's thinking run, lets him go. Initially, he's engaged with him, but then he turns him loose. So that's now Troy 15 different Packers with a touchdown this season as Crabtree gets his first. Doesn't even count Corliss, who took over for Finley last year. He doesn't have one. They have so many weapons. Crabtree gets his first. 14 nothing, Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers now 27 straight games with a touchdown pass at home. He, by the way, has had nine straight with two or more touchdown passes in the game. The stats just keep piling up. There aren't many incompletions. They do have 14 drops on the year, Green Bay. But how do you stop them? That's the question. Strader from outside the end zone. Runs into his own man and can't make the 20. And so now we will bring you inside the booth, and Troy, I will see if you can succinctly <laughs> go through the scenarios that almost made you a Green Bay Packer when you came out of UCLA. Well it came down to the last game of the season in 1988 and the Packers had to win the last game of the season Cowboys had to lose and I was at the Packer game there at Arizona Packers go on and win which they were not expected to do the Cowboys of course lost and Lindy and Fonny was the head coach at the time in Green Bay he had already told me that he was going to pick me if they had that pick. Freeman for Ben and a nice catch by Aurelius Ben as he gets out across the 45. And I wasn't real sure whether or not the Cowboys were going to take me but I knew there was at least a chance that I wouldn't be coming to Green Bay. Not that I had anything against Green Bay of course. The problem was I knew back then that I really I really struggled throwing a wet football. Obviously you have a better chance of having inclement weather here in Green Bay than you do in Dallas Texas so I think it worked out well for all parties involved of course Brett Favre came here just a few years later now first down for Tampa Bay they needed that completion of Ben and now they get a good run from Blunt he won't go down LeGarrette Blunt what a run one of the best of the year LeGarrette Blunt all the way and he broke tackles at every step 
Wow, what a run <laughs> by the second year back out of Oregon. That is unbelievable. Initially, Desmond Bishop, 55, is right in the hole for what would have been basically no gain. And then there's five or six guys that that have a chance to make a play on him. And that's just pure effort right there by LeGarrett Blunt. A big back, six foot, 250 pounds worth. That resembled Marshawn Lynch last year in that playoff game against the New Orleans Saints. Man, 54 yards, and that was with trouble just about at every step. A brilliant run, and the lead has been cut in half. That's a career long, and that's a career best. What an effort by Blunt. And it's a seven point game in Green Bay. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Visa. More fans go with Visa. Go a long time and not see a better run than what we just witnessed from LeGarrette Blunt. You want to say six, seven missed tackles all the way down the field and he just wouldn't quit. That was unbelievable. And a great run. One they desperately needed too. I mean I don't think this defense for Tampa Bay has really played all that poorly. Well, that was a much needed touchdown by the Buccaneers. A team that put the pads on and hit twice during the week of practice. Cobb slips at the 17. Let's go back to that touchdown. Just straight handoff. You can see they got try to get the wham block, but again, Desmond Bishop there. Of course, Morgan Burnett. He's up there to make a play. He can't wrap up. He's got a cast on his hand, but the others, they, they're not wearing cast, and none, none of them can make the tackle either. There's the big hit. Gavin Joseph comes in and cleans it up. He takes Tremont Williams as a potential tackler and just gets rid of him. Now starting from the 17. Fake the inside handoff and Rodgers. Fires a fastball to Jordy Nelson for a first down. They always talked about Brett Favre in that fastball. Well, Aaron Rodgers has heat too. Well, he does. I mean, he's got one of the strongest arms in in all of football. But you know, it kind of goes back to my point that overall, this this Buccaneers defense has has really not been that bad. They've played pretty well. They get pressure on Rodgers. There's good coverage down the field. He can't hold up for that long. Rodgers goes down. Sacked by the rookie Claiborne. A loss of four, and we go down to Pam Oliver. Yeah, Joe, now if the defense can follow suit to what the Bucks offense has did, the linebackers in particular got an earful from Raheem Morris. Morris wants those guys in particular to handle their business, just cover their man, and stop messing up assignments, he demanded. Back right, to you. Pam, and that could be a direct reference to Quincy Black. Oh, tree touchdown. Playboard now has four sacks on the year. On second down, Rodgers has to run again. And he is tripped up out on the edge by E.J. Biggers, a gain of seven. Bring up third down. I think overall, Tampa Bay, I mean, they've been pretty porous in pass coverage this season, but they're doing a good job in this game. You see, they're trying to work Michael Finley down the middle with that two deep safety look. and. We've seen a lot of this from Aaron Rodgers here in this half. He's not had people open. He's had to scramble. He's had to improvise. And we've seen him run with the ball more than he typically has to. Penalty flags, and now the ball flies. Jennings has picked off. But there are flags down back at the line of scrimmage. Corey Lynch, who got the start. But that defense jumped across again. Offside defense number 96 five yard penalty still third down they get Tim Crowder and that's the third time that there's been a defensive offside. Yeah I think initially you're going to see the offsides down here at the bottom in the neutral zone and I think initially Aaron Rodgers wasn't exactly sure whether or not it was on his team or it was on the defense but because the officials didn't shut down the play he then knew it was on the defense. And so he just took a shot down the field to see what he could get, not worried then, of course, about having the ball intercepted. He's completed eight straight. On third.
third down and two. A blitz. Rodgers floats it and drops. Jermichael Finley had it, a perfect throw, and it was just dropped. That was almost a great adjustment by Jermichael Finley. You see the tail end of the play there, but initially he was looking over his other shoulder, expecting the ball to the inside. You see him here. Now he's got to turn around, take his eyes off the quarterback and the ball, and then locate it. Tough play to make, but one that he obviously should have made it there. Mastay punts it. Parker will let it go over his head and into the end zone. So even with that great completion percentage of 73 percent for Aaron Rodgers coming in, it's a drop, and the Buccaneers have it down by seven. There's your Michael Finley, who almost got his head back around and made a catch on third down. Here are the offensive leaders for Tampa Bay. LeGarrette Vaughn with that 54 yard touchdown. She broke six tackles. And now it's a seven point game starting at the 20. Freeman looking for a quick throw, it wasn't there, and Walden makes the play. Sack number three on the year for Eric Walden. Well, you're going to see that was a designed run, but Josh Freeman, he wants to come up and throw it quickly to the outside. The problem is the receiver, I wasn't sure exactly who that was outside there, but he was not anticipating the quick throw. He instead is blocking for the running play, and Freeman had nothing to do with it, so Walden brings him down with the sack. up second down and 13 here's blunt again and Garrett gets it out to the 22 third down coming up let's go for a game break here's Kurt well a bad season for the Minnesota Vikings could be getting worse watch the left ankle of Adrian Peterson on this run against Oakland he goes down it gets rolled over on they caught him off right now all they're saying it's a left ankle injury and that's it they're down 10 7 by the way Joe Troy Penn all right, Kurt, thank you. Third down and eight. Blitz. Freeman completes. That's Parker. And what a third down weapon he's become. A 12-yard gain. The second-year pro out of North Alabama. At Green Bay, they bring corner blitz. To Josh Freeman's front side. It's a long way to travel. Play, holding number 28, offense, personal foul, roughing and passer, number 38, defense. Those fouls will offset, replay third down. Flags were back in the area where Freeman let it go. Well, there's Bishop, but the corner blitz is Tremont Williams, and he's the one who gets called on the late hit then to Josh Freeman. talked about it before once the ball's out of the quarterback's hands you've got to hit him before your second foot hits the ground so you they call that the two step rule you have to hit him within two steps from when the ball comes out it's now third and eight again Woodson coming off the edge doesn't get there good block and the pass caught for a first down that's Kellen Winslow and Woodson came within a whisker of his second sack of the year. Well, Lumpkin, the tailback, he's the third down back because of his ability to block. He picks it up late. You're going to see him there, number 28. He's looking, and then he sees Woodson late. But he does allow, because there was no pressure immediately in the face of Josh Freeman, that he could at least step up. A nice conversion there for the Buccaneers. Yeah, it shows how strong Freeman is also with that arm flat-footed to throw that as he did. 6'6", 248. Here's Ben on the handoff. And Aurelius Ben picks up nine. I think it's taken out by his own sideline. <laughs> Let's talk about Thanksgiving. We'll be on the air with a pregame show at 11.30 Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. And kickoff 12.30 Eastern. It's the Packers and the Lions. 
That's a Fox NFL special on Thursday. The pregame show on the air at 11.30 a.m. In Detroit. Ford Fox NFL Sunday pregame show at Ford Field. Here's Blunt and a first down in midfield. Brought down by Desmond Bishop after a gain of six. Good blocking up front right there for LeGarrette Blunt. Unlike the touchdown run that he had, he had a clean lane. Didn't have to break many tackles to pick up the yards on that particular play. And you know, they need LeGarrette Blunt to be a real factor for this offense. He'll come out, he'll have a productive game, and then the next week, not so much. And he'll come back and he'll have a productive game, and then the next week, not so much. It's been, been a very inconsistent year for him, just like it has been for this offense. Missed two games with a bad knee as Freeman has a good pocket, and he hits his fullback, Lorick. And Lorick picks up 10 and a first down. We're seeing Josh Freeman settle in a little bit, too. You know, he's had his inconsistencies this year and you know we've wondered whether or not the thumb has been bothering him he sprained it about a month ago he's not wearing tape on the thumb this week he had been in previous weeks I know in our conversation with him Joe he said that this week was the best that it felt he has not blamed any of his play on his thumb but you wonder with some of the inconsistencies that he's had as to whether or not it has been a factor looks pretty good today hand off to blunt Little stutter step, and he's still going. And LeGarrette Blunt is to the 25-yard line, and another good run from big number 27. It really is. Yeah, I mean, as I said earlier, he's just a big guy. He's hard to bring down. You know, he's able to break tackles as we're watching this game. Morgan Burnett, he comes down low again, and this is just not the type of back that you're going to be able to get to the ground if you don't take him up a little bit higher. LeGarrette Blunt, a real surprise in the league last year as an undrafted free agent to come out and rush for over 1,000 yards. Undrafted, originally signed by Tennessee, and then cut loose. He had that 1,000-yard season for the Bucs. Nice catch, Mike Williams. And he takes it down near the 10. That's kind of what they've been waiting to see from Mike Williams. You know, the inconsistency that I've talked about for the offense as a whole has really applied to each of these players who were such dominant figures last year in their run for 10 wins. Mike Williams goes up. That's where it, that's where he's good. He's a big guy. He's not going to outrun a lot of people, but he makes a play on a contested ball. Had 11 touchdowns last year as a rookie. Has only one this year. Five first downs on this drive. Here's Blunt, and this time, nowhere to go. Desmond Bishop, a loss of three. Yeah, this time Desmond Bishop in the hole. He makes the tackle. Unlike the touchdown run where he had him in the hole and failed to make the play. You see him, he comes untouched right in the backfield, and LeGarrette Blunt just had no chance. Red zone has been a problem for this Tampa Bay offense. They are dead last in the NFL in turning these trips into touchdowns. Tenth play of the drive. Freeman incomplete. Williams the intended target. And Freeman goes right to him and starts talking to him. Well, yeah, Mike Williams, you're going to see, he, he knows there's going to be contact. It's going to be contested. And he says, I, I don't think so. <laughs> you know, I mean, because Josh Freeman was expecting him to stay on the run, and that's where he's talking to him. I mean, that could have been dangerous right there. They easily could have been intercepted. You can't do that to a quarterback. If you're expecting on the route for a receiver to continue on the move, you have to. Now third down and goal. Setting up a screen for Lumpkin. And the former Packer takes it to the five where it's fourth down. Nice idea. They fake the wide receiver screen to one side and come back to Lumpkin on the tailback screen the other side. But that loss there on, on first down to LeGarrette Blunt just keeps them from being able to capitalize, but a good drive nevertheless. Yeah, five first downs on the drive, and it will end with this chip shot try by Connor Barth. He's missed only two all year. 23-yard attempt. 
it a four point game. So it's 14 to 10. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are hanging tough. And now we look at this year for Aaron Rodgers as he's about to head back onto the field. And all of these single season records that are within his grasp, some might be a reach. We'll see how it. Not many, though. Not many. He's got these records passing yardage, the Marino record, touchdown passes, the Brady record, completion percentage, that's a Breeze record, and quarterback rating, that's a Peyton Manning record. <laughs> Those are. Those are all good records and they're all good records to have and they may very well be Aaron Rodgers at the end of the season. You know I asked Mike McCarthy the other day I said hey is there anything that we don't know about Aaron Rodgers. I mean every week everyone talks about all the great things he's doing. What is it that we don't know about him and he's he had to give it a lot of thought and he said well you know I don't know that people realize what a great teammate he is. So America you now know everything there is to know about Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> <laughs> and that teammate comment may have some something to do with the remnants of Brett Favre here at the end of his time with the Green Bay Packers. Well, he is a great teammate too. I mean, he really spends a lot of time. Here is a onside kick try, and the team wins up on top. Tampa Bay says they have it. The ball never went 10 yards. There are no flags thrown. The ball's got to get now. There is a flag down. I just do not see it. We have a flag on the Fox box. The ball's got to get to the 45-yard line. Let's see who touched it first. Here is. Yeah, I thought Tampa Bay got to it first, but it, it looks like Barth gets his right arm around it. Around it. It's actually Kanan. And let's see. If he touches it first, it's an illegal touch. Because the ball didn't travel 10 yards, and they're still the trying to sort it out. By Green Bay prior to being touched by Tampa. Tampa Bay recovers the ball, first down. Well, now that's going to set off another discussion. Because looking at it on the replay, it looked like Kanan got his arm on it first. Let's see. DJ Smith is the one. That is there for Green Bay, but it certainly looks like Kanan got his right hand on the end of the football first, which would be an illegal touch. Yeah, as it happened Green prior to the ball the traveling the field, 10 yards. The ball was touched by Green Bay first. Yeah, I would agree with that, Joe. It looked like Kanan. It looked like he scooped it. You know, got his hand in there. You know, before D.J. Smith got to it. They just showed it on the board here at Lambeau. That's why you hear the reaction from the crowd. But it looked like Kanan got his hand on it right there, and he did. And again, that's an illegal touch. It didn't travel 10 yards. Had that ball been touched by Smith first, then Tampa Bay gets on top of it on the recovery, and it would be Tampa Bay's ball. But an interesting call there by Raheem Morris. You know, after you're able to get the ball down. Get a field goal, you know, cut this lead, and then to come back with an onside kick, you know, certainly the element of surprise is there. And I think that's what you do as a coach when you feel like you're you're overmatched a little bit by your opponent. I mean, that's the Aaron Rodgers factor, isn't it? And I'm I'm with you along the lines. I mean, it looks like Tampa Bay's gaining momentum. That momentum could go right out the window right here but you're always trying to find ways to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field. Yeah I think that's one of those deals where you say hey we want to be aggressive we want to be able you let your team know you're going to do that a little bit like what Sean Payton did in the Super Bowl against the Indianapolis Colts. Hey when we score or when we do this be prepared we're going to have an onside kick in this ball game. I'm sure that these special teams players knew that that was going to be the case coming into this game. Then you just have to execute it because you give the ball to Aaron Rodgers with a short field after you've cut the lead to four. I mean that sure puts your defense in a real bind. Each team has their offense on the field right now believing it's their ball. And you can see Raheem Morris going down the sideline saying it's our ball. We just haven't seen any look at a replay that shows that Kanan didn't touch it first. And if Kanan touches it first. 
then it will belong to the Green Bay Packers. I, I like the call though. I would I would say that I, I like what Raheem Morris did. Jimmy Johnson used to do those types of things in Dallas. They work a lot of the times, but when they don't work, then you've just got to have a lot of confidence that your defense is going to be able to step up and make a play. Right now, if if Green Bay gets the ball, which we think they will, if this defense is able to hold them to a field goal and keep this just a seven-point game, that'd be that'd be a great job by the defensive unit, and I think then it would have been worth the risk. Here it is again. Just don't see. I don't know that D.J. Smith touched it much at all. As Michael Kanan got his right arm around the football. And DJ Smith, I mean, I'm sure he's being talked to over on the sidelines. He, he didn't have to do anything. I mean, he didn't even have to go after the ball because it was not going to travel 10 yards. That'll be talked about with special teams coordinator Sean Slocum today and probably during the week. But you can see both offensive. Groups are out on the field as Aaron Rodgers has a rare chance yeah. to talk to LeGarrette Blunt. Say, how many times does he get a chance to talk to LeGarrette? Took advantage of it. Hey, nice run. Hey. Nice run. <laughs> Ran right through our defense. 54 <laughs> yards. Way to go. Alberto Riveron is under the hood. It's a challenge by Mike McCarthy, we think, worth it. He is two for five this year in challenges and just under 50 percent 44 percent in his six years now with Green Bay. And now as River on talks to the rest of his crew. We'll wait for the call as this has come to a screeching halt. With under four to go in the half. Well, now Raheem, he's going to. He gets to talk to Aaron Rodgers. He gets to talk to Aaron Rodgers. Gets a massage from Greg Jennings. A lot of people want to talk to Aaron Rodgers these days. What's your secret, Aaron? The ball was illegally touched by Tampa Bay at the 38 yard line. The ball will be placed there, first and 10. Green Bay will not be charged with a timeout. So the challenge well worth it. And the right call was made in the end is Green Bay up by four. We'll take over at the Tampa Bay 38. But you're on record as saying you like that call by Raheem Morris. Yeah I like the call. I mean it's. Uh, I think it was worth the risk. I mean if you're going to run those things you got to do them when they're least expected. And certainly when you cut the lead to four the Packers. Not that they're not well coached and prepared for those things, but that's when they would least expect it. Now it's just a matter of whether or not the defense can hold up. And I think that as the head coach and the defensive coordinator, Raheem Morris, you've got to have confidence that they can hold up when you're going to make that type of call. Now they, as the Packers are coming to the line, we're going to have another discussion. I'll go back to what I said a little bit earlier too, Joe. I think overall this defense, I think they've played pretty well. I mean, I really do. That they've gotten pressure on Aaron Rodgers. They've covered receivers well. We've seen some really nice catches by these receivers for the Packers, which is not atypical. And then we've seen Aaron Rodgers be able to create some things with his legs and pick up first downs running the football. But overall, I think this defense is, has come out and played better than I've seen from them in recent weeks. Whatever that discussion is, we won't know. They're just going to now start the play clock, and off we go. From the 38, up by four. Take it to Starks. Rodgers throws low, and a penalty flag comes in. Michael Finley, the intended receiver. Pass it appears, number 88, offense. Ten yard penalty, still first down. And it's on Finley. Yeah, at the top of the route, Finley, there's contact made. This defender, he has the right to the prop or to the space as well. It's on Barber. Barber's in coverage. And at the top of it, because Barber had position, Finley collides with him. I think that was a good call.
shut out. He has one drop. It's first and 20. Rodgers steps into it, looking for Finley. And he's got a first down inside the 20. 30 yards to Jermichael Finley. Well, Jermichael Finley, now he runs the corner route right on the opposite side. And you know, Corey Lynch was in coverage, and he was threatened by Jermichael Finley going deep on him. And that's what got him turned around. As soon as he opened his hips, thinking that Finley was going deep, it created a great deal of separation for, you know, not a great thrown ball by Aaron Rodgers, but an easy completion. On first down, here's Starks. Broke one tackle, picks up two. It is amazing to me, maybe it shouldn't be, that's just how well educated these fans are, that just under 73,000 people can be this quiet when the Packers are on offense and that loud when the Packers are on defense. It's like practice for Aaron Rodgers when they're in the red zone. Yeah, it's nice when you're playing in front of Educated fans that understand that. I mean, there's some places that are doing the wave when the offense has the ball. Second down and eight. Rodgers completes. That's Cobb, the rookie. Another weapon for Aaron Rodgers. And with 2.15 in the half, it's first and goal from the five. And how about Randall Cobb? I mean, as if this team doesn't have enough offensive weapons already that you have to contend with the Packers go out and they draft Randall Cobb in the second round. I mean, he's still learning of course he's a return man and he's been awfully dangerous in that area. Now you throw him out there on offense Aaron Rodgers said hey he's like Greg Jennings from the, from the first day you knew this kid was going to be special. And he's already proven that. Play clock at one. Rogers spends a timeout. Timeout. So that'll give us a chance to talk college football. This December, two of the most storied conferences in college football culminate their seasons with two epic championship games for the first time in their history. And Fox Sports will bring them to you on back-to-back -back nights. Pac-12 championship game Friday, December 2nd. Big Ten championship game Saturday, December 3rd. Both games are only on Fox. Yeah, I guess with UCLA beating Colorado last night, if they yeah. beat SC, yeah. they're in the Pac-12 championship game. How about that? Go Bruins. It's a shameless plug there. Yeah, but, but right. you're there, win or tie, hey, every yeah. week. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers from the Pac-12. Cow. Here's Nelson. Touchdown. Man, they make it look easy. When you're down in there that tight. You give Jordy Nelson that kind of cushion. Keep the lead. Pretty easy goings there. I mean, Greg Jennings, he's going to pick up EJ Biggers. They're going to the outside of Nelson pretty much the entire way. Made for an easy touchdown. And the guy who got a contract extension in September, Jordy Nelson, does the Lambeau leap. And it's 21 10. So that's the result of the onside kick attempt and the illegal touch. Aaron Rodgers took care of the rest. Pack three for three in the red zone, up by 11. Two minute warning. Today's game is sponsored by AT&T. Get it faster with 4G. Rethink possible. After the illegal touch on the onside kick, try four plays later, 38 yards. Aaron Rodgers now has 10 straight. With two or more touchdown passes. That is him adding to a franchise record. And it's 21-10. Two timeouts.
Bucks left for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Strutter from the end zone. Can't make it to the 25, brought down at the 24. You're the analyst, but I'm going to analyze the Lambeau leap. Okay. <laughs> first it was Tom Crabtree. Leroy Butler was the first one to do it years ago. Then moments ago it was Jordy Nelson who loves to get up and enjoy time with the crowd. And here's LeGarrette Blunt who did a Lambeau leap psych. Yeah, they would have thrown him back anyway. In fact, they threw the ball back. <laughs> you know? How many tries do you think it would take you to get up there? I couldn't do it. <laughs> you and Collinsworth, you and me were down there one time trying to get up there. Collinsworth couldn't do it. And he's like nine feet tall. Yeah, but he's not the athlete you are. No, that's true. You're right about that. Freeman completes it out across the 30. They're going to say he was down. Mike Williams, a completion of seven yards. Well, now you go back and, and you revisit Raheem's decision to kick the onside kick. I'll stick with it. I don't disagree with the call there, but because the Packers then go down the field and get a touchdown, doesn't look so good. But this is an important drive then because of all of that for this Tampa Bay offense. If they're able to go down the field and come away with any type of points on this drive, that'd be really huge going into halftime. Williams clearly down, no fumble. Wide open is Winslow. And he's to the 40. Two timeouts on the scoreboard for the Buccaneers. That was good for nine yards. A minute to go in the half. Over the middle, Winslow again. And we'll see if the Buccaneers use a timeout, and they do. 17 yards to Kellen Winslow, and he's inside the 45. Coming up, the Visa halftime with Kurt Terry, Howie Michael, and Jimmy. Get an injury update on Adrian Peterson in that big battle in the AFC North between the Bengals and the Ravens. The Steelers are on a bye week. They lead that division at 7 and 3, and then the Ravens and Bengals tied at 6 and 3. Here's the route by Kellen Winslow. You're going to see Desmond Bishop, the one place he cannot let Winslow go is to the middle of the field. He's trying to play his inside, but just an excellent route by Winslow getting to the middle where there's no help and picking up a nice game. They only have to pick up a little bit more here to get in field goal range. Need to get it to within the 38-yard line to get inside. Connor Bart's career long. That one for Mike Williams out of his reach. 41 seconds left at second and 10. That would have gotten him, Joe, right where you said on the 38 yard line and, and just a ball that got away from Josh Freeman, as you can see. Completed a lot of passes here today. And one of his one of his few poor throws on that last play. Career long last week against Houston. That means the 38 yard line. Which is five yards from where they are now. Second and ten. A little different conditions. Freeman. On the move is picked off. Tremon Williams. His third of the year. And that's now at least one interception and nine straight for this Green Bay defense. Really good coverage across the field. They're in man coverage. You see Jermon Williams and you know a ball that Mike Williams wasn't running at full speed. A ball that's a little bit then behind him and Tremont Williams able to make a play on it. That's where this defense is so good. They're so opportunistic on the on the back end when a quarterback is off on a throw they make you pay for it they've given up a lot of yardage passing but boy they sure make you pay on a ball that's not where it needs to be most interceptions in the oh. league on defense with 18 now and they can cover mistakes and weaknesses by forcing turnovers that's the 21st they've forced Rodgers scampers out of bounds with a first down and with 25 seconds left in one timeout, and now the ball is 
just inside the 40 at the 39 yard line you just don't expect the Green Bay Packers to be content with an 11 point lead. No I don't think they will be and, and they're definitely going to keep the heat on them. You saw the 18 interceptions that this defense has for Green Bay. I think a lot of people thought maybe when they lost Nick Collins that you know, some of that would be lost but even Charlie Pepper who's replaced Nick Collins has done a nice job with four interceptions this season himself. Rodgers for Finley and Finley incomplete. Sean Jones is safety defending and now Finley can't get up. Remember last year he was lost in October in a game at Washington and the Green Bay Packers won it all without that big weapon. Jermichael Finley. Looks like he is still not up. Yeah, he laid out with the one arm to try to bring that one in and it, and it looked like the way that he was grabbing that he landed on that shoulder. And that's what he injured. They give him a look with 20 seconds left and he's able to pop up. Here's the effort. The coverage by Sean Jones. And Green Bay because of the injury. Has a timeout taken away they have none remaining. Jennings. Nice play on the edge by Tlaib. That'll do it. No timeouts left for the Green Bay Packers, so this is an 11 point game at the half with the 9 0 Green Bay Packers. The four and five Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The last two plays of that half, they got Finley goes down and then Greg Jennings gets up slow. It's a 21-10 game here at Lambeau. He's a halftime coming up after a word from your local Fox station. It's a 21-10 game at the half. Second half is about to start. Now back inside our broadcast booth, I am Joe. That is Troy. And uh, I think for the most part, Tampa Bay Buccaneers have come to play here today, and they've played pretty well on both sides of the ball. I, I would agree with that. You know, it was a costly interception by Josh Freeman at the end of that first half, not being able to come away with any points. They were right there in a position to do that. You look at the Packers then on the other hand I, I don't think that they've played great by any means I mean offensively they they've been able to make a few plays defensively they've been okay and yet here they are with a 21 10 point lead I mean it's pretty remarkable what's happened here when they haven't played some of their best football you can follow your favorite team all season long just go to iTunes.com slash NFL. As we start this second half, Green Bay Packers will start with the football. Packers have won 15 straight. In fact, they haven't even trailed in the fourth quarter during that streak. And Finley looks like he's all right. Get an early look and see how Jennings Gets along after limping at the end of the first half. Yeah, you see Jermichael Finley kind of testing that shoulder out on the sideline. This is Cobb. From the end zone. Penalty flag flies at the end of the play. Hayward on the tackle. And now another flag. Mentioned Cobb has become a weapon, very exciting rookie. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 82 by the receiving team. 
half the distance of the goal. First half. He's put the ball on the ground a few times, but Mike McCarthy said, you know what? We've been waiting around a long time for a weapon like that. And we're going to work with him, but I'm going to keep him back there. <laughs> yeah, in fact, when we when we talked to him, it was pretty windy on Friday, and, and he said, as we speak, Randall Cobb's out there fielding punts. <laughs> he's practicing, but he's going to keep doing it. From the six, up by 11. Here's Starks. Over the left side, picks up three. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Well, Raheem Morris explained that onside kick. He said, first of all, we're playing the champs. We are looking for momentum, and we're trying to steal some possessions. As for Mike McCarthy, he said, defensively, we're tackling poorly. Offensively, he wants to establish the run, and on special teams, he said, no big plays. Back to you. All right. So the report from down on the field and the explanation for the onside kick and after a run of three yards with Finley in the lineup. Jennings as well at second and seven. Rodgers keeps it. Ducks the rush and now finds Jennings and it was tipped by Akeem Tlaib. That was there and Tlaib got a hand on it to avoid a big play. Boy, he sure did. And Akeem Tlaib, he's able to just get it at the last minute because Jennings clearly had a couple steps on him and even Jermichael Finley the opposite side. The, the Bucks were concerned about the run on that play. They dropped in the extra defender. They were man to man on the outside, a two man route. Rodgers had his pick of either guy. It was fortunate uh, the Bucks were there. That wasn't a, a big play. Third down and seven. Over the middle, it's tipped and caught by Driver. Biggers on the coverage and driver out across the 40. A catch and run of 34 yards. Another example of kind of the way things have gone here for the Bucks defensively. Good coverage there by E.J. Biggers. Ball gets tipped up. Donald Driver maintains concentration. He's able to haul it in and, and get a nice gain out of the play. I mean, I keep going back to it. I've seen some good coverage by these defensive backs. and. Whether it's just a receiver making a really nice catch or as we saw there getting uh, the benefit of a good tip. Here's Starks. Brought down from behind. Chasing him down was Quincy Black. These Packers are hard, hard enough to stop when when they're executing great. Man, they, they they make it look awfully easy in a lot of different ways. Second down and nine. They are so well coached. They have so much depth. Not only the job that Ted Thompson does, but the way he works in concert with his head coach, Mike McCarthy. Second down and nine. Pressure off the edge and the pass incomplete for James Jones. We talked to Mike McCarthy about his Blaga is slow to get up. He's had a big year. Walks it off. Why they're so good with getting street free agents to be such impactful players on this roster. A couple of other guys, John Dorsey, director of college scouting, and Reggie McKenzie, the director of football operations, building this roster. They get serious impact from the end of the draft and from street free agents. And now Rodgers is sacked. Daquan Bowers and Brian Price converged on number 12, and it's fourth down. Brian Price right in the middle, over the center. You can see the move that he then puts on Wells, gets by him in a hurry. So immediately then Aaron Rodgers has pressure in his face, and then Bowers off the edge, just nowhere for him to go. Two consecutive plays there. Pretty good hits on Rodgers. Second punt of the day for Mastay. Parker gathers it in just inside the 15. And lost the football. Out of bounds. It will stay with Tampa Bay.
Take a break and come back. The Buccaneers will have it. They get a break here. Is this ball headed out of bounds? Tampa Bay ball down 11. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By State Farm. For auto, home, life, and banking, get to a better state. By the Ford F-150, the only truck available with EcoBoost. And by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of the NFL. Here we go. As we look at the offensive leaders for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they have the ball at their own 32, down 11. Well, a nice stop defensively for Tampa Bay to start this second half. Now we'll see what they can do with it offensively. Caught by Mike Williams. And Williams picks up nine. Boy, that wasn't easy right there. Mike Williams just trying to get off the line of scrimmage. And had he not have given Josh Freeman a place to go with the ball, you see how well it was contested. Nice play on it, coming back and being able to make a catch. But Freeman really was going nowhere else with that throw. They got to find a way to get him going a little bit. Talked about it a little bit earlier, but it has been a struggle this season. For Mike Williams. Three catches, 31 yards today as Blunt picks up the first down. You, know, you think about it, Joe. You said earlier that you know he had 11 touchdowns, Mike Williams, that is, last year. And this season, you know, he's been targeted more than any player on the team. And he's only catching about half of those throws that are thrown in his direction. That's not good enough. You know, if you're a quarterback and this is your number one wide receiver, that guy's got to make more plays than that for you. We found him in the fourth round out of Syracuse last year. Had a big year as a rookie. Williams can't bring down Blunt, but Bishop can, a loss of one. We've seen Green Bay now a couple different times bring the corner blitz, and Tremont Williams being that guy. I think that was designed there on first down really more of a run blitz a lot of times you think that when teams bring defensive backs it's primarily thinking that it's going to be a pass I think Don Capers was anticipating the run and then he had the edge support by the corner blitz with Tremon Williams see the total yards about even second and 11 a blitz Freeman some room to run now slides with Walden in his face a gain of five. Not sure how Josh Freeman even found a crease to pick up any yards. I mean, obviously, this guy's a, a, a big physical quarterback at six foot six. He moves awfully well. I know we had him his rookie season, Joe, in that preseason game, and haven't had a lot of Tampa Bay games, but you know, I liked him then. Certainly, he did a heck of a job last year. Hasn't been quite as easy this year, but I, I still believe this guy's. Got a lot of great years ahead of him. It's third down and six. Underneath it's Winslow and Kellen Winslow has a first down. Woodson on the tackle but big number 82 has enough to move the chains. Yeah man coverage with Charles Woodson on Kellen Winslow and Hey, Freeman told us the other day that in a tight situation, the two guys that he trusts the most to get open are Kellen Winslow and Preston Parker, and he delivers to Winslow on third down. Tampa Bay calls timeout. This is their first. That came off the sideline as Raheem Morris was watching the play clock. Josh Freeman was not. 
Tampa Bay had to take a timeout before getting a five yard delay of game penalty trying to get something on this drive down 11. to blunt slips as he got to the edge got around Ryan Pickett a gain of three Eric Walden was there for the stop for Green Bay. Second down and seven Preston Parker checks in. He's been one of the better third down receivers across the entire NFL and now in there on second and seven. the 25 on second and seven a gain of 21 and they are getting Mike Williams more involved well they bring Charles Woodson off the edge and then Preston Parker does a great job out on the edge making the block Jeremy Trueblood he's also leading the way so they hit it at just the right time they catch him in a blitz man coverage and Mike Williams has a place to go with the ball after he catches it. It's blunt cutting up field and he just comes out of the pile and takes it down to the 11 and he is a big guy Legarrette blunt six feet 247 pounds but he seems to be able to get small at times and then he gets out of the big pile up of bodies yeah pretty impressed with what he's been able to do here in this ball game and it looked like he had a lot of room to the outside but he sees Tremont Williams come up in contain and he took it right into the teeth of that defense and got some nice yardage. Good drive being put together by the Buccaneers down by 11. At the 11, Williams gets around Tremont Williams and then eventually brought down by Bishop and Walden again of four. Well, we talked about trying to get Mike Williams going a little bit and and they've been able to do it here on this possession. Dancing around a little bit. I get start looking out for Desmond Bishop. I know that. We mentioned it the last time the Buccaneers were in this spot. Worst in the NFL in the red zone. And they get it in here against the Packers. Second and six. Once. Down inside the five to the four. Buccaneers can get a first down without getting a touchdown. The Blunt just picked up three. It's a good possession here by this Tampa Bay offense. And you know, let's be honest, this Tampa team, we talked about it coming into the game. They got challenged this week by their head coach, Raheem Morris. Went in pads both Wednesday and Thursday. Not typical in today's game. But after losing three in a row, they put forth a pretty good effort here in this game up to this point. Quick set up and throw. Touchdown and a penalty flag. Winslow for the score, but this may be against Winslow. And it is. Offensive pass interference to take the touchdown away. You Pass see it's man coverage with Sam Shields. Offense. Ten yard penalty with big third down. Well there's not a lot there. I was just going to say I, I'd like to have another look at that. I, I didn't see a lot there either Joe and I didn't see Sam Shields after the catch was made really contest. Now there was the push there with the left the left there he is right there there's Sam arguing there to the official and he, and he got the call and rightfully so didn't see it initially but he did push off there with the with the left arm now it's third down and 13. Bass 
is complete. That's Ben, but he's just to the nine. It's fourth down, and this Tampa Bay offense stops again in the red zone. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good drive because they had to travel a pretty good distance in order to come away with any kind of points. But considering where they were, to not come away with a touchdown is real disappointing. And that's been one of the problems for this offense the entire year is they have failed to capitalize when they've gotten down in that close. Now one official came in and overruled the other. The short completion taken off the board. Either way, it's a field goal attempt now 32 yards from Bart. He's two for two on the day. And it's an eight point game here at Lambeau. Green Bay on top. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon. Download NFL Mobile only from Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL. It's Kevin Green talking to Clay Matthews during the break after that last series and drive by the Bucks. Under five to go, third quarter, eight point game. Kanan will kick it back to Randall Cobb. Cobb puts it on the ground. He will take a knee. Packers will have it at their 20. Aaron Rodgers up by eight. Aaron Rodgers has thrown for two touchdowns. Jordy Nelson has one of them. Crabtree the other. And only 24 yards on the ground for starts. Tampa Bay's done a good job defending the run. They won't have to do it here as the pass is behind Jennings from Rodgers, second and ten. I think that's a good point, Joe, because as I said earlier, I mean, this Green Bay team, clearly you don't want to give up the big plays in the passing game, but they run the ball more than most people would think you know as far as their ratio of run to pass it's pretty good I mean Mike McCarthy likes a balanced approach and for a defense that's given up a lot of rushing yards in the last three games over 170 yards they've done a nice job in this game take the handoff pass is behind Jordy Nelson Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. The Lions were once down 24 to 7 at home to Carolina, but they scored in four of five possessions since, including four touchdown passes from Matthew Stafford. That one to Tony Scheffler gave Detroit the lead for the first time today. 28-27 in the third. Joe Troy and Pam. And we will all be there in Detroit on Thursday for Thanksgiving, the early game. Yeah, that last throw by Aaron Rodgers, that's one of the things you've got to hope for for a defense. Jordy Nelson was open. And Aaron Rodgers just made a poor throw. You don't see that that many times. I mean, obviously, he's completing a high percentage of passes. On third down, pass is caught by Driver. First down out across the 35. Well, he put this one on the money. Donald Driver. You see the move that he makes to the outside, and Aaron Rodgers delivers it perfectly. You know, we're seeing Donald Driver be targeted a little bit more in this game than he's been in previous games also. Green Bay 6 for 9 on third down today. Here's Grant. Bryant gets 5. Get coverage of every NFL game on NFL Mobile. Call Star Star NFL to get NFL action right now on your phone. Second and five. We saw Donald Driver make that key first down reception, and a guy who hasn't had a lot of opportunities this year. I mean, coming into the game, just just 18 receptions, but he's still a dependable guy here in his 13th season. Second and five, it's Starks. Penalty flag flies, and Starks goes nowhere. Lost yardage on the play, and 
it's a hold against Green Bay. It was raining flags on Josh sitting over there. I think everybody who had a one in their pocket was throwing it in his direction. Holding number 71 offense. The penalty is declined. Third down. They declined the penalty because of the loss of three, and that brings up a third down and long for the Green Bay Packers. The ball is back at the 41. It's third and eight. James Starks, who's been awfully productive here in recent games, he has not been able to find any room to run in this game. Pocket! 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 Blitz coming. Green Bay picks it up. Pass is broken up. A nice play is made by Tlaib. Boy, I'll say, and I think Aaron Rodgers would like to have that one back because they brought pressure, but it got blocked up really well. So he had a lot of time. And Akeem Tlaib, come, you see how shallow he comes, trying to get a hand on that ball. But had Aaron Rodgers have been able to lay this one over the top, I mean, there was nobody there. You saw the protection that he was afforded by that group up front. Tampa Bay hanging tough. Line drive punt. Parker will stay away. And that hit. That ball was touched by Jared Bush well before the one. They're going to mark it up by the nine. That's where the Buccaneers will have it, down by eight. You have to go back to 2001, the last time these two teams were in the same division, the NFC Central. They used to play twice a year, kids. Way back in 01 and before, from 77 to 01. The first year, 76 Bucks were in the AFC West until they moved to the Central. And Freeman finds a wide open Mike Williams, who's been busy. A nice completion on first down of 17 yards. Yeah, he really has been busy, and that was a nice route. I know that Josh Freeman said, hey, we, we've got to find ways to get the ball into his hands, and really couldn't quite explain why it was that he had been so inconsistent throughout this season. But he's done, done a nice job getting involved in this offense here today. He's got six catches, four in this third quarter. And it's a first down at the 27. Here's Blunt. Cuts it upfield. And a nice run on first down of three, three and a half. Talked about realignment. Tampa Bay's actually four and one against Green Bay since they left that former Central Division. And Aaron Rodgers has never beaten them, and Tampa Bay is hanging in there tough today. Yeah, they are, and I think they're doing some of the things that really allowed them to have the success that they had last year. They're showing a great deal of balance, more so than I've seen from them this season offensively, and they're getting the running game going. We're seeing some tough running by Blunt, and then making some plays in the passing game. Second down and seven. Fake the handoff. Freeman with all day. Down the middle. Wide open is Winslow. And he is inside the 35 before he's dragged down by Pepra. That's a completion of 37. Well, it's a nice route by Winslow. He's going to start like he's going to the post. See how he's looking to the post right there? And he gets Pepra thinking that he's going to the post. Watch in the middle of your screen. That move to the middle gets Pepra turned around. And then for the quarterback, that's an easy throw to make. That's just a nice job. A very quarterback friendly run route by Kellen Winslow. 37 yards to set it up at the Green Bay 32. It's blunt to the 30 again of two, and that should do it for the third quarter here in Lambeau. You know, you look at this game, Joe, and really the biggest difference in the score is the fact that Tampa Bay had the turnover that cost them from at least coming away with three points and then their inability to score touchdowns when they've gotten in there close it's going to be important for them to do something with it on this possession here Packers came in as the top scoring team in the NFL in the third quarter they were shut out here today eight point game back after this from your local Fox station as we go to the fourth
See the last four possessions for Tampa Bay. They've actually outgained in total yardage the Packers today. They're down by eight. Trying to snap a three game losing streak on the road against the undefeated Packers. Second and eight as we start the fourth quarter here at Lambeau. Take the handoff. Freeman steps up and finds a wide open Winslow. And he's out of bounds at the 15. Pepra made the stop after a gain of 15 yards, and Winslow takes the Buccaneers back into the red zone. He just runs a crossing route. It looked like Pepra fell down on the opposite side of the field as he comes to the end. He fell down as he was trying to change direction and pick Winslow up coming across the formation. Buccaneers are 0 for 2 in the red zone today and scoring touchdowns. They need one. Ben. Wide receiver screen and Aurelius Ben takes it inside the 10. Walden on the stop a gain of six. I really like what Greg Olson, the offensive coordinator, is doing in terms of his play selection and mixing it up. We've seen, you know, the balance that he's shown, but also within the passing game, some of the crossing routes, some of the corner routes, and then the quick hitters to the wide receivers like that last play we just saw. Second and four. Slips at the 10. Now it's third down. That seems to be kind of what you know. They, they had the nice play there on first down. They get ahead of the chains, and then Garrett Blunt. I don't know that he would have gotten much out of this. He tries to cut back, but Clay Matthews was going to be right there. Now whether or not he makes the tackle, that's that's a whole different question. But then they they kind of get behind a little bit now with what should have been third and a lot less than four. But still pretty manageable down in distance. Quick throw, pass caught. Touchdown, Mike Williams. And now we'll see with the Buccaneers within two. You expect the two point try, and that's what we'll get. The Buccaneers have not converted one this season. They've run the fade route enough times. To Mike Williams on the outside that you saw Sam Shields he kind of bounced to the outside expecting that route which then opened the lane for Williams on the slant route. And I agree Joe you know when do you go for two when do you look at the chart I think any time before the fourth quarter it's too early. I like the fact that Raheem Morris obviously is going for two here I think it's the right decision rather than settling for a field for an extra point and cutting the lead to just one. They're 0 for two this season. This to tie it. is dropped. Winslow was left wide open as Bishop fell down and he dropped it. Instead of a tie game, the Green Bay Packers still lead by two. So close to a tie. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Sprint. All football, no limits, only from Sprint. By Chase. Don't get shortchanged. Get your cash back with Chase Freedom. And by Cadillac. Well, any Tampa Bay Buccaneer fan has got to be proud of how the Bucs have played today, but also looking at that last chance to tie it. After trailing throughout, wide open, and Kellen Winslow just dropped it. Just dropped it. I mean, it could have been a better throw, but still, I mean, a ball that Kellen Winslow has to make. Green Bay Packers were shut out in that third quarter. Here's Cobb. And a nice play is made on the edge. That's Preston Parker. 
go back and take a look at the two point play you're going to see Kellen Winslow Desmond Bishop mismatch already he runs a good route Bishop falls down. I mean, they couldn't have asked for a better matchup than they had. You see, the ball's behind him, and he's trying to slow up. And as he's going full speed forward, you know, not not an easy play to make, but one that you'd certainly expect Kellen's, Kellen Winslow to catch. He's caught tougher. Packers with just 52 yards and two first downs this half. Lynn, Lynn. Rodgers steps up and hits Starks. Starks forced out by Bowers, the rookie. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. Well, the Cowboys trying to get it going against the Redskins, down by seven. But then Tony Romo looks like Tony Romo. Nice scramble and then finds a receiver. Deron Robinson in the end zone. Robinson's fifth touchdown in his last four games as a Cowboy. And it evens the score in the fourth quarter. Joe Troy and Pam. And we see where the Cowboys sit in the NFC East. The Giants will host the Eagles tonight. Cowboys looking for their first three game win streak since 09. Starks out across the 20. The third down coming up for the Packers up by two. Now I know coming into this game, Joe, the, the Tampa Bay defense. You, know, you used to in years past you'd think Tampa defense they'd always talk about the Tampa two coverage and you know not much of that this year I mean more man to man coverage and I, I felt in talking with Mike McCarthy he really thought they'd be able to take advantage of it we've certainly seen some big plays but overall this man coverage for Tampa Bay is held up pretty good against what we already know is a great receiving core. It's third down and four Rodgers out of the reach of Jennings, but a flag is thrown. And it's against Tampa Bay. So instead of a three and out, this drive will continue. Number 23, defense, five yard penalty, automatic first down. They get Myron Lewis. Well, Myron Lewis is on Jordy Nelson. And he hooked them there and turned them as Jordy Nelson's trying to go underneath on the crossing route. That's what they caught. And that that's unfortunate because Aaron Rodgers was never even even looking for Jordy Nelson. He was going to Jennings the entire way. And you know, we've seen Aaron Rodgers. I talked about earlier. The, the, the only way really you slow these guys down is he's got to be a little bit off. And he has been in this game. There's been times when his receivers have had a step and he hasn't completed them like we've seen. He has not beaten Tampa Bay in his time as a starter in his fourth season doing that, replacing Farr. And a nice catch and run by Starks. 12 yards and a first down. E.J. Biggers is the guy who had the first chance to try to make a play on him. We've seen him have to throw that swing pass now to Starks a few different times in recent dropbacks, and Starks not a not a huge part of what they do within the passing game, but you make a guy miss and they turn it into a nice game. Blitz wide open as driver. First down near midfield. Thirteen yard catch and run for the all time top receiver statistically in Green Bay franchise history Donald Driver. And Donald, Br Donald Driver still takes a great deal of pride in this game and I don't know what Tampa Bay was doing on that coverage. They, they brought the blitz man to man and Sean Rogers just way late getting over to cover driver. Rogers down the middle looking for Jones and another flag. A lot of contact as Jones was led over toward the sideline. We'll get the call from Alberto Rivero. Illegal contact, number 31, defense. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. CJ Biggers. 
DJ Biggers, he's on James Jones. Well, that wasn't much there either, but they called it. They called it to bring a, about a first down at the Tampa Bay 44. Fourth most penalized team in the league, and they have seven today. Rodgers just flips it flat footed to Starks. He's got another first down. On Thanksgiving, which is Thursday, we will hand out the goblin. Up between the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. Ford Fox NFL Sunday pregame show on the air at 11:30 Eastern. Delayed handoff. Starks slipped a bit, but a nice gain on first down to the 27. Six-yard gain. Here are the past winners of this award that I think we were kind of shamed into giving out earlier when we. Well, we're all with Collinsworth and all that. That's two Collinsworth references today. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, I think the Gobbler's always been coveted, but this year more so than ever because look how beautiful that trophy is. Yeah, we've changed it up a bit. No longer <laughs> looks like molded chocolate. <laughs> Second and four. Starks over the right side. Inside the ten. And now the ground game is starting to pick it up a bit for Green Bay. First and goal. Watch Josh sitting here. Right guard. He starts there and then he gets up to the next level and he's make he makes a key block there that gets Starks going. A nice lane for James Starks. Longest run of the day for Green Bay, 20 yards. Rodgers knows what to do with the ball in this area of the field. It looked like a false start. False start. Number 71. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's a guy you just circled with. By the way, nice work of your toes. Yeah. <laughs> you give it and then you take it away. I mean, that's, that's what Josh Sitton just did. Eight minutes to play. Green Bay trying to get it into the end zone to make it a two score game. So they've been rolling in the red zone. Lucy! On first down, floating it for the end zone. A lot of contact. Penalty flag as driver was interfered with by Biggers. Could be a hold, it could be a lot of things, but that's against Tampa Bay. Yeah, there was definitely contact by Biggers. Pass interference, number 31, defense. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Hooked him arm to arm. Yeah, he had his right arm, you know, in, interlocked with driver. It's been a tough series here for E.J. Biggers. Been called now a couple times. He missed the tackle on a swing pass there to James Starks, where he picked up a nice gain as well. And now he's given Green Bay first down. And penalties on this drive, a defensive hold, illegal contact, now pass interference against this Tampa Bay defense. Touchdown, John Coon. I get the feeling Mike McCarthy just tries to figure out who hasn't had a touchdown in a while. And this time it was John Kuhn and you know, the fullback belly had a chance there in the hole to make a play. But Adam Hayward was unable to get him to the ground. You know, a lot of help there along the way, but 
nevertheless, a nice job of responding by Green Bay on that possession. First touchdown by B.J. Raji, the latest by John Kuhn, and it's a nine-point game in Green Bay. That group, that talented group over there talking about it. The driver helped get him down there, and then John Kuhn has his third touchdown run of the year. Three defensive penalties on Tampa Bay on that drive. One of them happened on the third down that gave Green Bay a chance. It looked like it could be three and out. Nine point game. Strouder from about the five. Nice little move, and he's out near the 29. Seven and a half to go. We'll take a break. Come back. Tampa Bay Buccaneers with the ball down by nine. Today's game is sponsored by Chevrolet and their award-winning cars, trucks, and crossovers. It is a Lambeau-type day weather-wise. Low freezing. Not awful. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have come here and given the Green Bay Packers a real battle. They're looking for somebody else in the huddle as Aurelius Ben comes flying in. As the Buccaneers come to the line, down by nine. Delayed handoff to Blunt. Got one. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kirk. Well, the Dallas Cowboys have gotten it going here in the second half. Tony Romo spinning and finding Jason Witten for the longest touchdown reception of Witten's career. 59 yards on the score. Cowboys lead the Redskins 24-17. And Joe, that's Romo's third touchdown pass of the day. I think maybe his pregame chat with Troy had something to do with it. Yeah, they'll be talking uh, this Wednesday again. How did you know? If superstition has anything to do with it, it just does in sports. Freeman drops it off for Blunt. Oh, he tried to hurdle a tackler, and Williams got just enough of the foot to prevent a first down. Nice effort by Blunt. It's third down. Well, Blunt, he's tried this move a couple times today. Be a little careful with that one. Try to get over Tremont Williams. That might be the last time we see that move. It's third down and three. They like to go to Parker on third down. Here come the Packers. Pass is out of the reach of Mike Williams. And it's fourth down. Now, if you're Tampa Bay, you've got to punt it back to the Packers and hope that somehow you can figure out a way to stop Aaron Rodgers. They're going to need the ball two more times. Yeah, it was a tough possession right there offensively for Tampa Bay not being able to convert. They're on third down. But you're right with it being a two possession game already with just a little over six minutes to play. I mean they've got to get a quick turnaround by this defense. Or a turnover. Cobb waiting for it. Good punt. Just outside the 10. Randall Cobb room to run. Kanan can't bring him down. Gets a block. There's a flag on that last block. It's a 53 yard punt, 58 yard return, but some of that will be erased on a block in the back. What a weapon. Roel Preston was the last Packer. During your return, illegal block in the back, number 89. 10 yard penalty for the spot of the foul. First down. They get James Jones. Roel Preston, the last Packer before Cobb this year is a rookie with a punt return and kick return with a touchdown. He is electric. Pack, the only team that scored 24 or more in every game this season. They are undefeated. They've won 15 straight. And they lead by nine with 5-5-5 five, five, five to go. Pass is picked off. 
Intercepted by Tampa Bay. And stepping in front was Albert Mack. So instead of just running it, taking time off the clock, they put the pedal down, throw it, and Rodgers throws a pick. Well, this is a nice play by Mack. You see, he left his receiver on the outside. He then picks up James Jones, who Aaron Rodgers thought that he had a pretty clean throw to. Boy, just you called it, Joe. I mean, exactly what Tampa Bay needed defensively. Gives him the ball at midfield. That is only the fourth interception thrown by Aaron Rodgers this season. Life for the Buccaneers. On first down. Pass is caught. And a minimal gain is Desmond Briscoe as his first catch. It's a five-yard pickup. And here Tampa Bay knowing that it's a two-possession game for them. They immediately then go into the hurry-up offense. Blitz, second and five. Pass incomplete. Briscoe is open. Freeman couldn't get it to him. If you go back, to the first start Josh Freeman made in the NFL. You go back to November of 09. The 0 7 Buccaneers came back with 11 points down in the fourth quarter to win the game by 10. 38 28. That ran the Packers record to 4 and 4. They are 30 and 8 since. Oh, I miss those uniforms. Creamsicle look. Third and five. You have to figure two downs to get five yards. Won't matter. Winslow picks it up to the Green Bay 39, a gain of six. Burnett on the stop. You know, we've seen that kind of over and over by Tampa Bay there on that crossing route to Winslow. And then once he got it, he really did a nice job of knowing exactly where he had to get to to pick up that first down. Another blitz. Buccaneers pick it up. Down the sideline. Penalty flag and a catch by Aurelius Ben. It is a catch. It sets it up. There's a flag, but it appears to be on Green Bay. Yes, I, Joe, I think it's going to be on Sam Shields. He sits on the route. He wasn't anticipating Ben going by him. It was a great catch right there by Ben. But he's their deep threat. He's the guy that they really have not been able to get the ball to enough down the field. You see Shields. I mean, he never gets Illegal out of his back pedal. Number 37 on the defense. The penalty is declined. First down. You know, typically Shields is not the guy that you're going to run by because of his speed. But he was sitting on the route. And Ben, you see, he makes contact then with Shields, makes a nice play on it. But nice job of execution there by the by the Tampa Bay offense. 37 yard completion down to the two. They fake it to Blunt. And throw to a wide open Briscoe for the touchdown. A touchdown and they turn the turnover into seven points potentially with the extra point coming from Bart. Well, it's play action in the backfield, but they're in man coverage on the back end. Everybody else was locked up pretty good. But you're going to see, you see Briscoe there, and it's Pepra who just lets him go. I mean, he does not stay with them on the route, and so an easy touchdown. They needed a quick score, and they got it. And this is just a two-point game, and again, the difference in this game is the two-point conversion that was a little bit behind Kellen Winslow, but certainly a catchable ball just dropped, and that right now is what is the difference in this game. This this has been throughout in Troy. I think you called it early. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers really, even when they were down 14 to nothing and played well, well, it's shown up now. Oh, I, I think we're. You know, we're all impressed with what Tampa Bay has been able to do. I mean, clearly coming in this game, uh, Green Bay playing as well 
as they have been playing this season. But you know, as we said, Tampa Bay got challenged this week by Raheem Morris. They've had opportunities to kind of lay it down. You know, and in other games, they quite frankly have done that, but they've responded each time. It was a heck of a possession right there by Tampa Bay to go down and score the way that they did. Yeah, and what they did was take that turnover, the interception, a rarity this season for Aaron Rodgers at midfield and go right down, score quick. Now, heck, there's four and a half minutes left in this game. They don't have to be in panic mode. They can see what their defense can do. Even though right now everybody is up except one for the Packers as they are guarding against the onside kick. The only one back is Woodson. Here's another onside kick try, but a flag is down. It looked like somebody from Tampa Bay was offside. Either way, the Green Bay Packers come up with the football on the recovery of the onside kick. And I don't get that one at all. I don't either. And the Packers were defending against that. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers kicked right into it as John Kuhn comes away with the onside kick. Yeah, I, I, you know, the first onside kick, I, I didn't mind at all. I don't understand the thought process on this one at all. You had all the momentum going in your favor. The defense had made a nice stop with the interception. The ball was recovered by Green Bay. Offside, number 57, Tampa Bay. The five-yard penalty will be added. First down. You know, four and a half minutes to play. I mean, that's just basically Raheem Moore. You weren't surprising anybody there. I think Raheem Moore is just saying there's no way we can stop Green Bay defensively. And yet they've been able to do it. I mean, they, they, they obviously have had some breakdowns. It's been more because of pass interference and some penalties. But overall, I don't know that Green Bay has shown enough offensively in this ball game relative to what they're capable of to try that onside kick in that situation. Starting at the 46, it starts. It starts, gets six. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kirk. Cam Newton leading the charge for Carolina. He threw for a touchdown earlier. This is second rushing touchdown of the game in Detroit. Add on the two-point conversion to Steve Smith. And the Panthers and Lions are tied at 35. Less than three minutes left. Detroit driving, trying to get the win at home. So, for Pan. All right, Kurt, at home before they host the Thanksgiving game. Here's where they sit in the north. It's six and three tied to the Bears. And they got thumped by Chicago last week. Turned the ball over six times in that game. Starks runs into a wall. The ball comes out. And Kuhn ends up with it. Either way, they stop the forward progress at the 40-yard line. And now somebody is down. It is Starks for Green Bay. It'll be third down when they get him up. That ball was uh, tough looks, to see with his knees. It looks like his left knee was, was probably down, but that, I think that's where the injury comes in is after the fact when the ball comes out. He gets twisted backwards. This is the guy that's really, Troy, taken over the running back position. He was their guy last year during the postseason. From that first Philadelphia postseason game on. And he's really their biggest threat back there. Yeah, you'd hate, you know, you don't want to say, hey, you know, they don't want to lose this guy, James Starks, for the reasons you said. I mean, what he's meant to this team, he's been awfully productive going back to last season. But, you know, of all the teams in the league right now, you'd say, who can overcome injury? I mean, this team proved it last year, but. Well, you get twisted back like that. There's all kinds of things that are going in directions they're not supposed to go. He's not able to put much weight on his legs as he goes to the sideline. It's third down and four. Every time there's an injury or something, we see Raheem Morris out there talking to the opposing players. Ninety-one total yards, and he is in a lot of pain. Third down and four now. Big third down for this Tampa Bay defense. You know, some might say, "Hey, Raheem Morris showed." confidence in his defense being able to make a stop going for it there you know with the onside kick I, I think that's a I don't think that's an invalid argument to try to make I mean if you had that kind of confidence with the time left on the clock you kick it deep they could still get a stop Green 
Juve outside field goal range at the moment. The pass for Nelson. They do it easily at times. Touchdown, Jordy Nelson. No flags. Big third down and four, and instead of thinking about first down, they think touchdown, and it's 40 yards to Nelson, his second of the day. Well, you go man coverage against these guys enough times, and Tampa Bay has has been getting away with it and has been, been, been able to make some plays, but you keep up with that against this Packers receiving core, eventually they're going to make you pay, and they just did with Jordy Nelson. That extension that Jordy Nelson signed in September may become one of the bigger bargains around the NFL. Bargain for the Green Bay Packers, a little stutter step, and then right past Myron Lewis for the touchdown. And right past him. I mean, this guy's turned into, you know, really one of the more reliable receivers in in all of football. I mean, he's a big guy. He's got much more speed than what you would think because of his size. Here's the end of that play with Aaron Rodgers taking a hit. But Jordy Nelson coming into this game over the last three weeks had been targeted 15 times and had 14 receptions. I mean, that's a great deal of confidence then for Aaron Rodgers when you know that, hey, when I go to him in his direction, he's going to make a play. And he does. We see it each and every week. He's really cut down on the drops. Aaron Rodgers has his seventh 300 yard passing day of the season 21st of his career Jordy Nelson who by the way caught passes at Kansas State from Josh Freeman six catches 123 yards two touchdowns they targeted Nelson seven times today he's made six catches and a pretty good return by Strutter out across the 30 let's go for another game break here's Kirk well the Lions continue their comeback Matthew Stafford hooks up with Brandon Pettigrew for the go-ahead touchdown. 42-35, two and a half minutes left. And get this, Joe and Troy, Matthew Stafford, five touchdown passes today to five different receivers, none named Calvin Johnson. Coming off a four-interception game is Matthew Stafford, and if they win, that'll set up a fun Thanksgiving in Detroit. But a track meet there in Detroit. They better get their rest. They're on a... Short week. Starting at the 32, two timeouts left for the Bucks. Again down by nine. Pass is tipped, picked. Tremont Williams, his second of the day. And that should ice this game as it went off the hands of Winslow and into the arms of Tremont Williams. Well, it's what we've said, Joe. I mean, when you're off just a little bit and the ball comes up in the air off the fingertips there of Winslow against this Packers defense, bad things happen. Tremont, a pro bowler last year, had a great postseason. And that's his second interception of the day. Looks like the Bucks losing streak will go to four. And the Packers winning streak will go to 16. Yes, but over, over, over. Oh, oh. Here's Grant. Grant takes it to the 10. Clock continues to wind. If a two minute warning to stop it in two timeouts second and seven. You know people compare Aaron Rodgers in his year this season. Say well he's better than Brett Favre ever was. Brett Favre played 326 games. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers playoffs included is playing in his 70th. But he is having this dominant season. And here today his seventh. 
300 yard day of the season. Two minute warning in Lambeau. Pack on their way to 10 and 0. Two minutes left with some wild games going on around the NFL. The Green Bay Packers. When you hold Aaron Rodgers to a quarterback rating of 114.1, that's like keeping him in check. But he has his seventh 300 yard passing day. And it's second and seven. Rodgers keeps it. Underneath Crabtree, who has a touchdown today. Claiborne was out there to make the stop. Talk about Aaron Rodgers' quarterback rate. I don't know that people really fathom just how good that is. You know, to have a quarterback rating of over 110 in every ball game this year. I mean, some question the validity of the quarterback rating. I, I think when you're over 100, it means you're playing really, really well. And obviously, he has done that. I think that when when he goes home tonight, the, the throw that's going to bother him the most, or the one that he's certainly going to remember, is, is the interception. You know, I mean, he's a guy who just has not made those types of mistakes. But he has been flawless, really, for the most part, all year long. Came in with a quarterback rating of 130.7. Brady is number two at 102. Coming up after football, you have football. Barkley's Premier League. First meeting of the year between two rivals Chelsea takes on Liverpool and beaten in their last six high def right here on Fox third down and seven Coon. Coon will be brought down at the 11 a timeout is taken. That loss of one yard, by the way, cost Aaron Rodgers a 300-yard day. <laughs> he's at 299. Well, maybe that'll be the other throw he's mad about. <laughs> Tampa Bay's now out of timeouts. Here's the remaining schedule, Troy. As you look down the list, I mean, that Giants game in the Meadowlands has to jump out at you. They'll be tested here at home the last two games of the season. What do you think of next week at Detroit? Well, I mean, Detroit, if they're able to hold on and win that, that place is going to, it's going to be a great scene on Thanksgiving. I mean, it's going to be a real test for this. They're all going to be tested. They get harder, you know, certainly as you move down the stretch. I expected to see more out of this defense by Green Bay today than they showed. It. This one is no good. And his first miss of the year. 29-yard field goal. And it remains a nine point game with a minute 36 left. Let's go for a game break. Here's Kurt. Hey, don't rack up a Cowboy win just yet. Rex Grossman, 14 seconds left in regulation. Looks up with Dante Stallworth, who was cut last week and then re signed. They tied the game 24 all, 14 6 to go in regulation. Joe Troy and Pam. So it looks like they're headed to overtime in Landover. In a game that if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you just you're looking for consistency, some kind of a streak. They're trying to win their third straight. Rob Ryan with all that he talks about that defense. That's a game you can't lose. Well, I think that's a game you say they just throw the records out the window. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Captain cliche as Winslow makes the catch and then shoves A.J. Hawk off of him a gain of 18. No timeouts left. And it's a two score game. You know, prior to, they're going to kill the clock here. But you think about this defense for Green Bay. We came into the game talking about how much improvement they showed against Minnesota. Part of that was they were going up against a rookie quarterback in Ponder. But they sure looked like the defense that we saw last year that terrorized people throughout the playoffs. And then playing a Tampa offense that had been struggling, you know, this defense has given up 450 yards. And counting in this one. There's Tom Capers, their defensive coordinator. So they've taken a step backward. It's the loudest the crowd has been all day as Freeman goes down. And around his legs was Woodson. A loss of five. Well, that's the guy who makes it happen. Craig Lumpkin, the tailback, he's responsible for picking Woodson up on the blitz. And 
he fails to do so. But you know, whenever we see Charles Woodson around the line of scrimmage, just good things happen. He went in and sat down with Don Capers and said, "Let me do what I did last year. Let me get up and after the quarterback." He had a big week last week. Here's an incompletion of Winslow. And Pepper was there defending with A.J. Hawk. You know, we talked 40 seconds left. Sorry, Joe. We talked about it. You know, where, where Green Bay has been good, clearly, and they were good again today, is on the interceptions. You know, they've gotten the takeaways. And, not, you know, that's that's great. I mean, it's, it's good defense when you're creating those. But when you're giving up as many yards as they've given up, and then your only real defense is the takeaways, you know, how long can that hold up? It's fourth down for Tampa Bay, their last gasp. 15 yards to go, and it's up to Winslow. And that hurdle didn't work. The hurdle moved. Bishop on the stop and that'll do it as the Green Bay Packers now with one more snap will be 10 and 0 officially <laughs> we've seen so many guys trying to hurdle the last time they were 10 and 0 the 1962 Green Bay Packers and they won the NFL championship led by Bart Starr they went on to finish the regular season 13 and 1. How far will this season carry the Packers? They are the defending champions, having won Super Bowl 45 over the Steelers in Arlington last February. You know, you talked a little bit earlier about Ted Thompson and the job that he's done. It, it's, it doesn't seem crazy that just not that many years ago, people were calling for him to be ousted because they didn't bring Brett Favre back. And I say the names again. John Dorsey, the director of college scouting. Reggie McKenzie's getting a lot of talk, the director of football operations. Top to bottom now, the Green Bay Packers, the best run organization in the NFL from the front office to coaching to the field. And they're led by that guy, number 12, Aaron Rodgers, and his Packers are 10 and 0. We'll come back and wrap up our day after the break. Green Bay, they were in a battle. They win it by nine over the Buccaneers.